Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is June Saito, Assistant Professor of Political Science at Yale. Professor Saito's research focuses on the institutional determinants of representation and redistribution, in particular how choices of constitutional structures and electoral institutions translate into redistributive consequences. He teaches courses on Japanese politics, international relations in East Asia, and comparative political institutions. From 2002 to 2003, Professor Saito was a member of the Japanese House of Representatives. Today we'll talk with him about the end of the Liberal Democratic Party in Japan. Welcome, Professor Saito. Hi. Until very recently, the same political party was in control of the Japanese government for more than 50 years. Why is that? Well, there are two factors. Uh, one was uh, that the Liberal Democratic Party has been a very pragmatic party, and it, it did whatever it could to stay in power. It changed its policy platform very flexibly whenever it sensed uh, the risk of electoral defeat uh, in future elections. Second, the LDP was the largest uh, spender of pork barrel money in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, back in the 1990s, uh, about 70% of the total government construction projects among OECD economies uh, happened in a single country, Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, in some years, the Japanese government spent more money than uh, on, on construction projects, government construction projects, than the U.S. government spent uh, on their military wow. uh, in terms of the uh, gross amount. That's how uh, the LDP stayed in power uh, for such a long time, almost uninterrupted. Okay. So I understand that Japan has been, has been a democracy during that period mm -hmm. um, and that the same party kept winning over and over again. Is it because the people simply liked the, um, that party and its policies? Japan has been a democracy in the sense that elections took place periodically and frequently. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, what is puzzling is that people did not necessarily like the party uh, at all. Mm -hmm. If you take a look at internationally comparable uh, opinion poll surveys, uh, for instance, the Japanese people's trust uh, in the government institutions and the politicians they elect uh, is the lowest among OECD economies, uh, I mean countries uh, with advanced industrial uh, democracies. Okay. And uh, additionally, violent oppressions of opposition party leaders, for instance, have been absent, uh, which had been prob problems uh, in many other what is called electoral authoritarian regimes. Japan was uh, different from those types of political systems. Okay, so uh, what happened? Um, what happened to the um, this Democratic Liberal Party? It's Liberal Democratic Party. Yes, I'm sorry. It's no longer in power. Mm -hmm. So what happened? There are several factors. I'm actually writing a, a book about okay. uh, the end of the LDP dominance mm -hmm. uh, in Japan. First of all, the government has almost exhausted the monetary resources out of <coughs> which they could uh, splice uh, policy benefits uh, to their supporters. Secondly, uh, recent decentralization reform uh, hurt the party significantly uh, because the LDP uh, effectively committed the political organizational suicide mm. by firing uh, their lawyer uh, party activists uh, at the local community level. Uh, in Japan, uh, unlike many other democracies in the world, local politicians, politicians who serve in the municipal legislatures and mayors uh, were the almost uh, paid activists uh, for the Liberal Democratic Party. And because of the recent municipal uh, government consolidation efforts uh, pursued by the LDP, a large number of politicians at the local level uh, lost their jobs. And because they were no longer uh, faced electoral pressures to, uh, uh, for themselves, they lost the incentive to uh, campaign for the party. And 
I am arguing that that was the largest mistake the LDP government uh, committed. Okay. So what lessons can we learn from the Japanese experience? Well, democracy is uh, more than periodic elections. Mm -hmm. In order to have a healthy uh, democratic uh, governance uh, in a country, uh, we need something uh, more. Okay. And that said, democratic institutions, in particular electoral institutions, are the labor contract uh, between the citizens and the political leaders. Mm -hmm. If those rules of elections are poorly designed, citizens have difficulty getting the job they want uh, done by the government. Right. And the Japanese example uh, provides abundant uh, examples of such failures. Okay. Let's talk about you uh, and your personal life. You once served as a member of the House of Representatives in Japan. What made you run for office? Well, I was young, brave, and naive mm -hmm. uh, in many senses. Uh, I was 33 years old when I ran for office, mm -hmm. and I was a fourth-year uh, doctoral student uh, in the PhD program uh, in political science uh, here at Yale. Uh, first of all, I was uh, frustrated with the on ongoing uh, corruption uh, scandals uh, in my hometown mm -hmm. and in my home district. Okay. Second, uh, I was in the middle of drafting a dissertation on pork barrel politics uh, in Japan, and I literally <laughs> plunged into it uh, myself. And I thought that somebody um, might have to show a viable alternative to the conventional way of politics to the voters. And I won the by-election, which filled the vacancy that was created by a resignation of my predecessor, who was himself involved in a campaign financial uh, scandal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when, while you were in office, uh, what were some of the things that you were able to accomplish? Uh, not much because I was there uh, for only a year. Okay. Uh, but uh, with that very brief experience, I think I learned a lot. Okay. Is On the other hand, um, my social science background uh, helped me a lot uh, in formulating policies. Some of the, my policy proposals were later adopted by the DPJ's uh, Electoral Manifesto. Mm -hmm. Is a year the normal amount of time that someone is elected to? Actually, very brief. Okay. Uh, my predecessor, for instance, uh, had inherited his electoral support base from his father, mm -hmm. and his supporters, his supporters groups, uh, have been there for more than half a century. Right. Okay. And that's the idea about uh, long-term serving mm -hmm. uh, politicians in Japan. Actually, many of the seats are effectively hereditary. Uh, roughly half of the politicians that belong to the Liberal Democratic Party were multi-generation uh, politicians who inherited uh, the electoral support base. So it was really amazing that you would have been elected because the other candidate had so, had, had so much support. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I ran from the opposition party at that time mm -hmm. uh, in one of the districts which was regarded as the LDP's stronghold. Uh -huh, okay. uh, there are several reasons. Uh, one reason was voters were obviously frustrated with the way uh, politics uh, was taking place uh, in that area. Okay. Second, uh, mm -hmm. because everybody knew that uh, my predecessor would try to come back sometime soon, uh, nobody was seriously considering uh, running. Mm -hmm. And I simply volunteered to run. but. Uh, because Japanese voters place more emphasis on ascriptive or descriptive representation, they want uh, their representatives who look similar to themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, for that particular reason, I didn't emphasize very much of my Yale educational background. Uh, instead, uh, I emphasize the fact that I grew up in the farm mm -hmm. uh, and my parents are still farming in that area. Okay. All right, let's talk about um, your newest work. I understand you're, you have a new book you're working on. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about it? Yes, uh, my book project is about uh, everything I have just uh, said about the mm -hmm. Liberal Democratic Party. Okay. Uh, it's going to be about the end of the LDP dominance uh, mm -hmm. in Japan, but I'm 
writing a book uh, so that uh, it will be useful and interesting for scholars who study uh, other political systems, uh, for instance, politics of China or politics of Latin America. Mm -hmm. It's an analytical monograph uh, with uh, solid empirical evidence, and I hope it will clarify uh, many of the important uh, paradoxes and puzzles that sustain the, the LDP's dominance mm -hmm. uh, in Japan. Okay, so, <clears throat> but the LDP is no longer um, mm -hmm. dominating, that's correct, right? Yes. What is the new party? The Democratic Party of Japan, which is the party I was uh, formerly affiliated with, mm -hmm. uh, formed a new government uh, in Japan. Unlike the Liberal Democratic Party, which is a coalition of uh, hereditary uh, political families and big businesses, the DPJ's uh, primary support base includes uh, unorganized uh, consumers mm -hmm. and uh, labor union members. Okay. And are you working on anything else at the moment in addition to the book? There are two new research projects mm -hmm. uh, that, is that are ongoing right now. Okay. Uh, one of them is about the tension between diplomatic commitments and democratic accountability. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, <laughs> after the DPJ took the helm of the Japanese government, um, there has been a tension between the U.S. government and the Japanese government regarding what to do with uh, the U.S. military bases uh, on the island of Okinawa. Okay. The DPJ is committed to their supporters uh, to reallocating, relocating uh, military bases to somewhere else. On the other hand, the LDP administration uh, had already cut the deal with the U.S. government, and we expect a lot of tensions uh, between electoral accountability and diplomatic commitment. Mm -hmm. In fact, not it, it was not only the Japanese government, but South Korean and Taiwanese governments uh, faced a similar situation when they uh, experienced the partisan turnover in their own government. Mm -hmm. So I'm organizing an international uh, joint research project that explored this uh, important policy issue. Mm -hmm. okay. Aside from that, I, I'm interested in, this is my personal aspiration, mm -hmm. but I'm thinking about writing a book about political culture and rice-eating habits uh, in East Asian civilizations. Okay. Can you expand on that a little bit more? I grew up uh, on a farm, as I have just mentioned, mm -hmm. and the pattern of collectivist-oriented uh, political behavior is deeply rooted in rice farming uh, economic structures uh, historically mm -hmm. in East Asian uh, countries. Okay. And I'm, exp I'm interested in exploring this uh, more uh, deeply and analytically with uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, evidence. Okay, very good. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing some of your work. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. For more information about Professor Saito and his work, please visit our website at yale.edu backslash Macmillan Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.